what's up youtube today well tonight i am making a cake called better than almost anything and i'm sure some people have heard about this cake um my sister introduced it to me because i had never had it before um but when i did try it it was really good so tonight that's what i'm gonna make and um i'm kind of excited because this is the first time on this channel I have made dessert everything else has been dinner um, and it, it's gonna be two videos that I'm making tonight because I'm planning on making homemade chili so I'm starting off with dessert first and um, then in a different video which should be uploaded a little bit after this video I'll be showing how I make homemade chili so of course with this recipe you would need German chocolate cake mix, sweetened condensed milk, Smucker's caramel topping, and I just got this for extra just in case there's not enough. And of course the basic necessities of making a cake eggs milk and butter now normally on the cake you know they have the directions where you're using water vegetable oil and three eggs now I noticed that when making a regular box cake you know sometimes they are kind of moist so what I do is everything on the box everything on the box is what I substitute I substitute my uh, one fourth, one and one fourth cup of water with one and one fourth cup of milk. I substitute my half cup of vegetable oil with a half a stick of butter, which is a half a cup. And I substitute, well, actually, I use eggs, but I add one. So where the measurements are the same, I use the same measurements, but with the eggs, I add one extra, and I notice that it makes the cake really moist so that's what I'm doing now um, not using water and vegetable oil so I have my butter here I have my eggs and my milk and everything else I need but um, for this recipe first of course you have to mix the cake you know the way the box says that's the beginning of making a cake anytime so I'll get around to um, how you make the toppings for this cake and how you'll see every step along the way. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I'll try not to skip any steps, but for right now, this is what we're doing. We're going to add everything to this, and this is just a cake mix. Nothing else in it, just the cake mix alone. Um, and like I said, we are substituting everything, so we're going to add the... Um, the half a cup of butter I'll add that and I know you know some people are saying you know oh well you know you you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to do that I say it every time I cook on every in any time I'm cooking anything I say it every time everybody cooks different everybody cooks different you know because if you just look into different people's households you'll see that you might think some way you learned is the regular way, you know, until you see somebody else cook it. So everybody cooks different, but this is the way I felt like was much easier for me, which was um, substituting everything that was on the back of the box, you know, because this is the way it tasted better to me. So you can go by the regular ingredients on the back of the box, but um, I'm just getting my milk poured now. As I said, um, this channel, hoping it gets bigger than what it is now. I know it will. Just got to give it time. So that's my one and my one-fourth cup that's, um, that I'm substituting for the water. So we're going to put in the one cup of milk. God damn it. And the one cup, the one-fourth cup of milk that substitutes the water. And then all we have left to do is... The three eggs, and I'm actually doing four. So, I'm going to go ahead and do four. Let 
Y'all, I'm trying. I'm trying to do everything like filming with one hand and cooking with the other hand. Here. Just like that. But you gotta I'm giving I'm giving my camera to my daughter so I can try to You gotta move with my hands. I don't know how to feel. Was that three or two? That was three. That was three? Yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. I, I have Just a different right voice. Stay right there. Look at, look at the mixing stuff. You see that that delicious yummy yummy stuff? You don't have to say nothing. <laughs> All right, so my last egg. My last egg, egg is a jumbo, and that's a uh, four eggs that I'm putting in there, and then um I'm gonna mix it. Look around the ingredients. I forgot to get the mixer. Here's the don't talk. See what I'm saying? That's exactly why I didn't want you to help. I knew you couldn't do right. Hey, um, Jesus Christ. Okay. Alright, now I got my mixer. And this mixer, this mixer is um just a basic mixer. And I only use one. Don't talk about my mixer. This is one that I have been using for a long time. And actually, it was my mom's. So we just passed it down. And it's really bad looking. Right here. Jesus. Alright, so we just gonna mix this up. it on high until everything is all mixed together. I already have my oven preheated to 350 or kind of in between 350 and 325 so the cake don't burn because my stove, my stove cooks really fast so you know where you can cook it on 325 or 350 my stove cooks really fast and I don't want the cake to burn so I'm cooking this on 325, right in the middle of 325 and 350, I guess you could say. Alright. Make sure you get the size of the bowl because some stuff don't mix right away. So just try to make sure it's all mixed up. And I already coated my pan with vegetable oil. And that's it. Just kind of pour vegetable oil in the pan. Or if you have um, if you have vegetable oil spray or any pan, you can spray your pan with the pan. So that's already done. And I think this is getting to look pretty well mixed. All right. Thank you. Now, this is, of course, after it is mixed. And, like I said, the pan is already uh, greased, you know, edge to edge. Already greased it. Um, And, of course, just like any regular cake, let me get, like, a spoon or something. I got to take you guys with me everywhere until I get something... That is going to help me as far as um, filming only and not able. Come here, Kai. One more time. I just need to put this. Um... All right. Just keep it right there. Wow. So I'm hoping this turns out right. 
I've never made this cake before. So what I will say about this cake is that um, it's just it's different because it was how you normally can pour cake out and it comes out in a different consistency. This cake consistency was very, very um, I would say more like puree, more crumbles. Um, but we're gonna see what happened. Um, try to get as much as I could out the cake. Normally, if I make a yellow cake, you know, I'll leave a little bit left and give them to give the bowl to my younger ones. I know that's how some people, some people's parents used to do them after they make the cake, they give them what's left. Okay. All right. So if I'm not wrong, and I mean, you guys are seeing this firsthand because once I edit these videos, like, I don't even go back and look at them because I try to kind of walk through it to where there is not a lot of editing or if any at all, I try to make it to where we just going straight from step one to step two with no pauses. So, um, this is the cake and I'm just checking you guys because I'm noticing the consistency in this cake is very different, but... We are going to roll with it because I did everything and now that the cake is in there, I'm going to go ahead and it's so dark. I got to get another bowl from my light or from my stove, but the cake is in there and, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the type that goes, you know, that cooks by the way things look. But with this, of course, you're working with a chocolate cake, so I'd rather just be safe and um, try to find, like, the pan size versus the time. So I would say maybe 30, let's just say 30, 30, 35 minutes. We'll check it in between time. And um, everything else that we need is literally right here so these are the things that we still have to work with um and this right here we're not using the top part but we definitely are using the bottom because this cake consists of you poking holes in the cake and pouring the toppings that we're going to mix together you pour that over the cake and that's what makes this cake so good because you know how most cakes are just dry at the bottom or not dry you know they're moist but the bottom there's nothing there with this cake it almost is better than almost anything I can't agree with the name because the caramel the way it's made the caramel just sits at the bottom of this cake and it doesn't dissolve it just sits at the bottom which makes this cake really good and I forgot one more thing that we were missing and it is the Please, Kaya, Kaya, please go regulate. If you hear screaming in the back, I'm sorry. I am downstairs, and I don't know what's going on upstairs, but I'm not going to stop the video because, like I said, when you got a household of six kids, it's rarely going to be quiet. I'll have to, like, stop, go, stop, go. But this is the also... A part of the topping, which is the Heath Bar uh, toffee bits. And I learned that you can either use this or you, if you want to, you know, you just make it like a smaller cake. You can buy you maybe one or two Heath Bars and just crunch them all the way out. Crunch them all the way out and that's what's going to go on the top. And another topping that I have that I don't want to leave out too long is this. So yeah, with this cake... You're not using regular frosting. You're not using frosting, but you're actually making your own whipped frosting out of the whipped cream and the condensed milk. And everything you see here is literally a topping. It's a topping, and we're going to get around to that. And I will be back when um, it is time for the cake to come out. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So we are back and the cake is still in the oven and now um we are going to put together the second thing you're going to need after the cake is done 
when the cake is done I'll take it out and we'll let it cool maybe for about 10 minutes and once it cools then what I'm about to make now is of course like I said when the cake kind of cools after 10 minutes we're gonna poke holes in the cake and then the mixture we're about to put together is what you're gonna pour over the cake and then let it cool again so you need like I said one can of sweet condensed milk so one can of this and then I'll show you too what um, the measuring cup is for so for the most part the bacon has been done and now we're just setting up the um, the layers and the topping so I'll show you what the half a cup is for as soon as we are done with this I'm just trying to let it drain you know so that I'll have a adequate amount kinda let that drain like I said you know this channel is very 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 new so like I said until the subscribers come until the views come I'm just gonna keep on going and I'm gonna keep on making videos and cooking things and then the, the subscribers will come as they come but I will just keep on cooking because I found this came in handy that even though my channel is fairly new I don't live um, close to my dad but I found that this is handy for him because of course he lives alone so a couple of things I've made you know like I told him the other day is really easy for him to make you know because of course you know me and some men you know are more savvy as far as cooking or cooking or fixing things and my dad is more of the fixer kind of guy so these kind of recipes or anything I put on you know YouTube is helpful to him so like I said until the subscribers come I will still keep making videos because this is very helpful to my dad you know or somebody in a family because in my family we are very good at like passing down things like if you know you come over and you try something that I made you know this is just another way of somebody, you know, just showing them how I made it. Because we do that a lot, too. My family get together. We cook. We eat. We exchange recipes. So it's helpful either way. So now I already got the condensed milk or as much as I could pour in there. And then you're going to pour the whole jar of caramel. Pour the whole jar. And you don't have to scrape this clean because... The, the leftover or what's left, you know how if you clean out a jar and there's still some once you turn it upside down, you can also use that for something too or it's going to be used for something too. So pretty much this cake is uses like all portions of whatever is there. Whatever you have, like right now, you see the jar is empty but I still have, can't really see it, I still have you know enough to put in there that's left for the top like I said because this cake you you are gonna drizzle some of the caramel over the top from this you know just from of course putting the top on and sitting it upside down you know that's a good remedy if you really only are working with one jar just sit it upside down and whatever is left will puddle at the bottom and then we'll get around to showing you you know how to put it on the top but of course and this is something that we rarely use in my house, which is why I still have it. But this is the same thing that can be drizzled over the top also. But now that we have this mixed together, we're going to mix this up. It's really thick, but just mix it up. Just mix it all up until it's completely mixed. I'm trying to get a good angle because like I said until this channel or you know everything comes in because right now um searching online for you know um little tripods that i can use in the kitchen you know i'm looking at lights you know things like that but i said for the most part i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna film and when that stuff come in you know like my tripod and my camera my actual camera because i'm sure you can tell by the video 
uh, graphics that I'm doing this straight from a cell phone. Like, you know, I had contemplated on cooking and posting it, but then I was like, you know, no, I'm not going to do it. And then one day I was like, you know what? Just make the video, get the channel started. And then as you get all your equipment you need, worry about that then. So, as you see, this is all mixed up. This is all mixed pretty good. I definitely need that light to get the lighting better. And then it'll be a different view. But right now, I guess you guys, if you've watched my videos, you've literally been watching it from uh, my point of view type of video. You know, everything that I'm seeing is what you are seeing. So, not an all bad thing, but I want it to be better. I need both of my hands to cook. It's kind of hard cooking with one hand. And then, you know, holding your recording device with the other hand. So this is mixed up. And this mixture is what will get poured on top of your cake when it comes out the oven and once it cools. This is what you'll use once you poke. Once it comes out, we're going to let it cool for 10 minutes. And um, then we're going to poke holes in the cake with the little, um, with this end of the mixer thing. We're going to poke holes in it. And this is what's going to get poured on the top, but... Now this is, you can't see it, but it's a half of a cup. A half of a cup gets put, of your the half cup of your mixture, it gets put half of your mixture gets put to the side to make the frosting for the cake, which gets mixed with your whipped topping, or not your whipped topping, but your whipped cream. So definitely want to get that caramel taste in there. And this is what the whip topping is what you'll be mixing or your caramel is going to get mixed with your whip topping. And that's going to make your so-called whip frosting. But the rest of this that's left is what gets poured into the cake once you poke the hole. So I wanted to come back and show you guys because this is a very important part of it, which, in, which to me is the best part of it. So I'm going to just sit this to the side. And then, um, as you see, my half a cup is kind of, be careful, you guys, because as you see here, over pouring makes all the difference because it's, it expanded really quick. It expanded really quick, and I had to take some off. I was planning on having, like, a lot of caramel busting out of that frosting, <laughs> but it's all right. Made a little bit of a mess, but that's cool because, like I said, this is what goes over the cake, and this is what gets mixed in. Gets mixed in to make the frosting. And listen, don't leave your whipped topping out. You know, I got it out to show you guys that it's a part of it, but I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator. Don't leave your um, whipped topping, your whipped cream out because if you do, it's gonna be way too um, soft. And you're not going to be able to mix it up. And the frosting or the topping is going to be like really, really milky. So during this whole process of during this whole process of you making the cake, keep your whipped cream. Keep your whipped cream in the refrigerator, you know, right up until I would say when the cake is done and it's in the refrigerator to cool. Then take your whipped cream out and add the stuff. But we'll get to that soon enough. So, once again, I have this tipped upside down. Because I do want to use, you know, like last time I had used just this. It was just this that was there or on the top. And I don't kind of want to mix flavors. But this is just a backup option. So, that's where we are now. And stay tuned because when I come back, should be around about the time when the cake is done. And I'm poking holes and letting it cool. So, stay tuned, guys. All right, YouTube. All right, we back. So, the cake cooked about 30, 30, 35 minutes. I just kind of watched it, and I would say um, 30 minutes about. And I, you see holes in it already. I poked the holes in there to make sure it was done. I didn't want to take it out, and it wasn't done. But after your cake cooled for about 5 or 10 minutes, you still need it to be warm when you poke your holes and pour the top over. So I'm going to just, um, poke the holes in the cake. 
because it still needs to be hot or your caramel will not run through so you can't really tell because the cake is brown but I'm just poking you know a row of holes inside with the end so just poking holes and y'all remember I'm doing this like looking and then looking back at the camera so just kind of follow through with me y'all poke holes poke your holes and the bottom is still really hot you know i let it cool about 10 minutes but the bottom is really hot so i'm still just literally poking holes y'all all the way until the end and i'm so glad because like i said the way i make the cake you know, it's moist to where you can eat the cake. Well, I know you can't tell how soft, but you can eat the cake all the way to the end. And I like stuff like that, like I said in a different video. But now that, if you can tell, the holes are all poked in the cake. And at the bottom, is still really hot. And the top is warm. So then you take the mixture, not the one in the half a cup, but you take the mixture that you poured from. And you take this. Trying to do it two ways. And you just want to kind of pour it over the whole cake. So just going back and forth, pouring it over the whole thing. And the purpose of it being warm is so that this can go into the holes we just poked into it. And then even after this, it'll be like coated on the top and the sides. And uh, we're going to let it finish cooling the rest of the way in the refrigerator. But as you see, the holes are starting to pop back up. So when you see that, that's a good thing. Because at least you know everything is going through the cake the way it should. Okay. All right, that's good enough. Kind of created a puddle in the middle of the cake. And it's leaving the edges. So that's exactly what you want to see. The middle seem like it's not taking it that great. So I'll just poke a few, not many. Okay. So it's taking some time, but it's absorbing it. You just look. Let me turn the light up some. There we go. So just giving it time to soak in. The middle is taking longer because when I made the cake, of course, when you take a cake out, it falls. So the middle is like the deepest part of the cake. So that's taking time. But that should make a pretty good um centerpiece. I'm just poking extra holes. I think I put enough, but I'm just trying to help it out. Okay. So now from here, while, like I said, the cake is still warm, it should go through. While the cake is still warm, as you see, it's just starting to, you know, slowly go in. I just got to give it time. So from here, we are going to put the cake, trying to make room for it. We're going to let it kind of absorb, as you see, by itself. So it was full at one point, and then it just went right in there, which is perfect. Perfect, perfect. Just run it back to thin it out some, you know, so that it's not struggling too hard. You know, it's pretty stiff, so if you get, like, an overload like I did, in which it makes the cake really good, and it'll get all in the corners, just kind of run it. You know, to where you're evenly putting it back. And it should absorb just fine. But you'll know you'll have a full coverage of caramel at the bottom. 
you know, don't let it puddle. Just kind of move it around some. Move it around some. And then this is the finished look. And then from here, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And we're going to completely... We're going to completely let that cool. And I mean completely cool to the point because you don't want to add your whipped cream topping to something that's really hot. Because you don't want your whipped cream to melt. And then that way you can't fix your cake like you need to. So we're going to let that cake completely cool. And then I'll show you what we are going to do. I just put a top on that with the half a cup of mixture and the toffee. And we're going to finish it off. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so now the last time um, I had, was filming, I, I was showing you guys how the caramel had to um, kind of ease into the holes of the cake. Well, this is what it looks like, and I would say about it stayed in the fridge, refrigerator maybe about 10 minutes, you know, because it was already cool for me letting it sit on the counter for a while, and then me putting it in the refrigerator, um, by by pouring that stuff, pouring the the mixture on there, and putting it in the refrigerator or putting it in the refridge. I'm sorry, I say refrigerator. I'm partly country, but I put it in there. Well, the reason why you're putting it in there after you add the mixture is to kind of um you know the mixture is already thickened, but once of course once you put it in the refrigerator, it completely thickens, and for the most part, you know it's more um. It's more sturdier, I guess you could say. It's more like um, it's going to sit where it sits. You know, it's no more of the running back and forth and, you know, sliding back and forth. So now that um, we've got that part, as you see, a little, a very little bitty corner. I'm going to try to get some, turn the light up just a little. Uh, There we go. In the corner, it's still sitting, but that's fine because that's the more the better. So this is where we are now. It's cool. I won't touch it though because um of course it's sticky. So if you touch it, it's going to pull off the top layer. So now there we go. Now we are going to make the so called like the whipped frosting. Now, the half a cup that I told you to sit to the side. I just made like a little pocket on the side because I know um it's like you if you leave it regular, it's going to almost overflow it. And I might be close to it, but I tried to put like a little pocket on the side over here, you know, to where I could pour the mixture in without it overflowing. Because I still got quite a bit of room on the sides over here and over here to kind of spare me. So you take your half a cup of mixture that you poured off of and you're going to add it, add the whole thing. So I think we might be okay. Add the whole thing to your uh, whipped cream. Trying to make sure it all comes out. Try to turn it up just a little. It's hard to, you know, see the whipped cream if the lighting is way too high. So, just letting it all pour out. And then this, I'm going to mix it up until it's all mixed together. Takes a while. Of course, you can save time by um, using a spoon. Okay. So now we just kind of mix this up. Mix it all up together. So this is just the whipped cream and the mixture that you mixed earlier. You're bringing that mixture out. And it's kind of hard to see, like I said, but I'm going to mix this up and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm back. And the whip, the whipped cream and the mixture is all mixed up. And you should be good actually mixing the mixture in, in the, you know, the bowl the whipped cream came in. You should be good. Just stir very carefully, you know, so that you don't get like an over spillage and you end up losing some because this is what is um gonna go on the top of your cake you guys and we are when i say in the running ends of getting this cake done we are at the end so 
just kind of put it on there and I'm you know you do it of course with two hands it'll be super easy but of course like I said I'm doing this with one hand so just bear with me trying to keep the phone out of the shade and I'm just gonna pour a little bit and I'm just gonna spread it with my spoon so just kind of you know spreading it all over and you know because your cake is cool the um the whipped cream should not do any type of melting whatsoever like everything should be good and set in its place because the cake is no longer hot so the whole cooking process of this cake is over and right now I'm just um spreading it as you see just spreading it over say it's just like frosting but it's it's a lot lighter it's 10 times lighter than frosting and um it's funny because let me back up some i'm gonna give you guys a little bit more light and i'm telling you when i get my ring light i would be so happy because then you guys will see exactly what i'm seeing right now the lighting is off but um for the most part in making this cake I myself, I am not a whipped cream person. Like, you know, I've ran into people who love, like, eat whipped cream straight out the can. And I'm telling you, I hate whipped cream. And it's strange because when I got introduced to this cake, I was like, I don't know. I guess you could say I was borderline shocked because with any time, like, if, you know, per se, if I have, like, a little party and it's, like, something last minute get together, you know how... Piggly Wiggly or places like that, you know, they have their separate little um, cakes, that, you know, the pre-made cakes. So, I'll go grab one of those. And if it says whipped topping, I don't care if it's the last thing on the shelf, I will not buy it. Like, I hate whipped topping frosting. So, when I got introduced to this cake, you know, I was kind of like whipped. I don't think I said that's going to be you know, what, a norm, what you would normally say when you don't want something or when you think it's going to be bad. I'm like, ew, this is going to be disgusting. But like I said, my sister put me up on this recipe and I do not regret it because it is really good. And I guess, you know, with me, I don't know if you can really tell. I'm kind of bringing it back some just so you guys can see. I'm just thinning it out because, like I said, I am not crazy about whipped cream at all. Not so much the taste, but just the texture itself. I am not crazy about whipped cream, and I mean at all. I hate, I've never been the type to just eat whipped cream from a can. Actually, if it wasn't for this cake, I would have never bought whipped cream. Like, never. So, you know, right now I'm just trying to smooth it out, you know. I guess for a regular person, it wouldn't take all this. But, you know, I just feel like I want it, you know, kind of even. I don't want to bite into it and then just feel like I'm soaking my teeth in the mashed potatoes or something. So, right now, I'm just trying to, um, you know, even out the even out the whipped cream. I'm sorry if sometimes I'm off the cake, on the cake. But, like I said, if you've been watching, you know that everything I'm doing is literally with one hand like one hand everything is with one hand so i think this is pretty good i'm not gonna smother mine you know the amount of whipped cream is completely up to you if you are a whipped cream fan then you can just put the whole thing of whipped cream on there i myself i am not a whipped cream fan i'm surprised my kids enjoyed it because you know that's just kind of how it goes in a household you know when you don't eat something you don't buy it and nobody else eats it because it never comes in the door. So this is just this finished, you know, evenly spread it just like frosting, but it's um a lot lighter, a lot softer, a lot easier to spread without ripping the cake. So that's done. And now for your top, of course, this is where it gets exciting. We are going to put it's upside down because I cut the bag open, but. The Heath chocolate toffee bar bits that I showed you. I guess, and I don't know. Let me just, I'm just 
pre-squeeze in a bag, you guys. I don't want no big chunks on the cake. I'm so picky. Whatever. Okay. So, as you see, I'm just... My God, like this cake is slowly, slowly coming to life. And I cannot wait to eat this. But, like I said, after this, I'm trying to bag up to keep from getting the shadow of my phone on the cake. You know, because then it kind of makes it dark. So, right now, I'm just sprinkling, sprinkling the uh, toffee bits. Because these, I noticed with these, these were this... And the caramel at the bottom of the cake was like my favorite part, you know. Because the first time my sister was nice enough to make me one because I had been bugging her. Like, please make me one of those cakes, you know, because she's really good at get-togethers, you know. She's the one that'll come out with the desserts nobody's ever had before. So, that's who put me up on this cake. And like I said, this was the most favorite part for me. Now, if you are a type where you are more you know teeth sensitive you know like me but if it's something good enough you guys i will eat this cake like i'm chewing hot food and it sounds bad but guess what that's how good this cake is i'm in love with this cake so everything is there you know you don't have to put like i said everything is completely up to you you can put less toffee bits you can actually because even after i was done i still have Less than half of a bag left. So if you like candy and you like the, you know, a heath, or if you like the taste of just the top, or if you think you might like a candy bar, I can't really explain because I've never, like I said, everything this cake was made from, I'm not even going to lie, you guys, I, I was not a fan of. I have never bought a heath bar. I have never bought whipped cream. And lo and behold, these are two things I never buy. I never buy German chocolate cake mix. Never. These are just things that, the cake was made with that I just so happy and fell in love with so you don't have to put so many but of course I did and this is what we have left puddled at the bottom I think which that's a pretty good amount of caramel at the bottom that we have left and then I'm just gonna let's see we're gonna tip it up one time and uh, I'm gonna try to open it with this other hand without making a big mess Try to get it before it goes all the way down or go back down. Okay, let's see. Ya. All right, here we go. So then we just doing it. You drizzle however you want. Why I started sideways, I have no idea. But you can drizzle your caramel however you like. If you figure, you know, oh, I don't think I like that on the top, don't put it on the top. Because when I tell you, when you cut into this cake, trust me, there will be enough caramel at the bottom for you to just enjoy the taste all together. So, like I said, and then if you are one that likes this, you know, if you are like, if you like caramel, then that's why I have said, um, you know, this jar is completely done. I want to get in a better lighting just to give you guys a better. Well, I should have started making it over here, huh? Okay. Well, as you see, the little stripes of caramel, caramel, I switch it when I call it. And then this is what I was talking about when you, you know, if you run out of this and you figure you want more on the top, then you could easily open this. Let me just see. I'm just trying to decipher, like, the taste Let's see. Just a taste between the two, just to see, you know, if it's. Okay, guys. So, one, this one is a lot, lot sweeter. And I know everybody's saying, well, duh, it goes on ice cream. True, it goes on ice cream, but you can use this for other things. But this, mm, I would say. I don't know, you guys. I would. I. I don't think I would use that for extra. You know, I don't know. Cause I'm not the really, you know, I'm not heavy on sweet, sweet stuff. Because, like I said, my teeth are not the best at handling sweet stuff. But this one is definitely a lot sweeter than the actual Smucker's. Not bad, but. You know what? Actually, you know, it's like the more I'm tasting it. 
let's see look at this y'all so I'm literally just putting like I put a trail so the smuckers is the darker version right and the Hershey syrup is the lighter syrup so I'm like really going in with this y'all okay so if you can see you got the darker syrup try to focus focus okay so you see darker syrup and lighter syrup and I literally just drizzled it all over and we just gonna work with that because it's sweet but I, I think it'll give the cake a really good kind of sweet taste because the Smucker's caramel is just however you want to see it caramel caramel that's what it is it ain't it, it's not real sweet but this right here adds quite a bit of sweetness which is why I only did a, a few lines but this is the finished product and it's it's pretty heavy so this is the cake that I may call the better than almost anything and I believe it I believe it and I'm gonna stick to it because the first time I tried this cake it was it was really good and I kind of want to cut a piece out to show you guys what the bottom is but if you make this cake you'll see that the bottom when you cut into it anywhere in the whole entire cake when you cut into it you'll notice that the bottom has all the underlying caramel that we poured the caramel mixture it's all sitting at the bottom of your pan which makes this cake you just get sweetness from the top to the bottom so this is the finished product and because you know whipped whipped cream can get kind of um soft or it can get really soft if it's like in room temperature then what you're going to do is take the cake and Put it in the refrigerator and just let it sit. I want to let me turn this light down some. Okay, let it sit so that your um, whipped cream can kind of stiff up a little. And I would say maybe after about, I'm gonna cook something else after this, which would be probably the next video posted, which is how to make homemade chili. But while I'm cooking, I think it might take me about an hour or so. Not really sure, but just let it cool. To where, you know, the whipped cream can take place. I say about 30 minutes. Just leave it in the fridge. And um, when you bring it out, it should be ready to eat. And um, while this cake took, like, you know, multiple steps, it was definitely worth it. Because it's a family favorite. And it's something that I would make over and over again. I will. Like I said, I wasn't... Well, goddamn, I wasn't a big fan of whipped cream, and this um, I just usually put the extras up, but I wasn't a big fan of whipped cream and anything else, let alone German chocolate cake. Never picked this stuff up without this cake ever being introduced to me. I would never pick up these things on the regular because I am the type where I call it me sticking. I say, I usually say, go with what you know. Because anytime I y'all step outside the box and do something different, it never works. So I learned from that and just stopped. But whipped cream, I got mm, quite a bit. But, of course, this this is reusable. If you got that kind of household where anything that come in the door you can reuse, <laughs> like my household, this is it. Just I'm dumping it out. I'm washing it. And that is it. But that concludes my video for my better than almost anything cake and thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe to try to get this channel up where it needs to be because like i said i don't have subscribers but i am cooking because this cooking is helping my dad and you know my brother anybody any kind of single man you know in my family that doesn't have a woman to cook this channel is really helping them because they're kind of watching and cooking with me as I cook too. So until this channel get where it needs to be, like I said, I'm going to keep on cooking. Um, finally, got the first dessert. Finally, finally, I'm glad. My favorite dessert also. So the first one, finally done with that. And 
like I said, just work with me. This channel going to get better because most of the time at the end of my videos, I'm just showing my tabletop and me cleaning up and picking up. And, you know, when I get a camera, I'll be able to pivot and turn and things like that and put myself in the videos. But for right now, I just want to cook and show you guys firsthand, you know, everything that you should do. So thank you guys for watching Chef with Kashmir. Um, I'm still working on my other channel, Cashmere Charm. Slide over there and subscribe just so that, you know, you can be in the know when I post something. It's coming really close. I'm still going to school and trying to keep up with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my kitchen. And I'm looking forward to the cake for dessert. But thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next video. Hit that um, notification button so you'll be updated when um when I get ready to post my next video. All right, you guys. Thank you. Bye. All right, YouTube. All right, we back. So the cake cooked about 30, 30, 35 minutes. I just kind of watched it, and I would say um, 30 minutes about. And I, you see holes in it already. I poked the holes in there to make sure it was done. I didn't want to take it out, and it wasn't done. But after your cake cool for about 5 or 10 minutes, you still need it to be warm when you poke your holes and pour the top over. So I'm going to just... Um, poke the holes in the cake. Because it still needs to be hot or your caramel will not run through. So you can't really tell because the cake is brown. But I'm just poking, you know, a row of holes inside with the end so just poking holes and y'all remember I'm doing this like looking and then looking back at the camera so just kind of follow through with me y'all poke holes poke your holes and the bottom is still really hot you know I let it cool about 10 minutes but the bottom is really hot <laughs> So I'm still just literally poking holes, y'all, all the way until the end. And I'm so glad because, like I said, the way I make the cake, you know, it's moist to where you can eat the cake. Well, I know you can't tell how soft, but you can eat the cake all the way to the end. And I like stuff like that, like I said in a different video. But now that, if you can tell, the holes are all poked in the cake. And at the bottom, it's still really hot. And the top is warm. So then you take the mixture, not the one in the half a cup, but you take the mixture that you poured from, and you take this, trying to do it two ways, and you just want to kind of pour it over the whole cake. So just going back and forth, pouring it over the whole thing. And the purpose of it being warm is so that this can go into the holes we just poked into it. And then even after this, it'll be like coated on the top and the sides. And uh, we're going to let it finish cooling the rest of the way in the refrigerator. But as you see, the holes are starting to pop back up. So when you see that, that's a good thing. Because at least you know everything is going through the cake the way it should. Okay. All right, that's good enough. Kind of created a puddle in the middle of the cake. And it's leaving the edges. So that's exactly what you want to see. The middle seem like it's not taking it that great. So I'll just poke a few, not many. Okay. So it's taking some time, but it's absorbing it. You just look. Let me turn the light up some. There we go. So just giving it time to soak in.
the middle is taking longer because when I made the cake, of course, when you take a cake out, it falls. So the middle is like the deepest part of the cake. So that's taking time. But that should make a pretty good um centerpiece. I'm just poking extra holes. I think I put enough, but I'm just trying to help it out. Okay. So now from here, while, like I said, the cake is still warm, it should go through. While the cake is still warm, as you see, it's just starting to, you know, slowly go in. I just got to give it time. So from here, we are going to put the cake, trying to make room for it. We gonna let it kind of absorb as you see by itself. So it was full at one point, and then it just went right in there, which is perfect, perfect, perfect. Just run it back to thin it out some, you know, so that it's not struggling too hard. You know, it's pretty stiff. So if you get like an overload, like I did, and which it makes the cake really good, and it'll get all in the corners, just kind of run it. You know, to where you're evenly putting it back. And it should absorb just fine. But you'll know you'll have a full coverage of caramel at the bottom. You know, don't let it puddle. Just kind of move it around some. Move it around some. And then this is the finished look. And then from here, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And we're going to completely, we're going to completely let that cool. And I mean completely cool to the point because you don't want to add your whipped cream topping to something that's really hot because you don't want your whipped cream to melt. And then that way you can't fix your cake like you need to. So we're going to let that cake completely cool. And then I'll show you what we are going to do. I just put a top on that with the half a cup of mixture and the toffee and we're going to finish it off. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So now... The last time um, I had was filming, I, I was showing you guys how the caramel had to um, kind of ease into the holes of the cake. Well, this is what it looks like. And I would say about, it stayed in the fridge, refrigerator maybe about 10 minutes, you know, because it was already cool for me letting it sit on the counter for a while. And then me putting it in the refrigerator um, by by. Pouring that stuff, pouring the, the mixture on there and putting it in the refrigerator or putting it in the refridge. I'm sorry, I say refrigerator. I'm partly country, but I put it in there. Well, the reason why you're putting it in there after you add the mixture is to kind of, um, you know, the mixture is already thickened. But once, of course, once you put it in the refrigerator, it completely thickens. And for the most part, you know, it's more... Um, it's more sturdier, I guess you could say. It's more like um, it's going to sit where it sits. You know, it's no more of the running back and forth and, you know, sliding back and forth. So now that um, we've got that part, as you see, a little, a very little bitty corner. I'm going to try to get some, turn the light up just a little. Uh, There we go. In the corner, it's still sitting, but that's fine because that's the more the better. So this is where we are now. It's cool. I won't touch it though because um of course it's sticky. So if you touch it, it's going to pull off the top layer. So now there we go. Now we are going to make the so-called like the whipped frosting. Now, the half a cup that I told you to sit to the side. I just made like a little pocket on the side because I know um it's like you if you leave it regular, it's going to almost overflow it. And I might be close to it, but I tried to put like a little pocket on the side over here, you know, to where I could pour the mixture in without it overflowing. Because I still got quite a bit of room on the sides over here and over here to kind of spare me. So you take your half a cup of mixture that you poured off of and you're going to add it, add the whole thing. So I think we might be okay. Add the whole thing to your uh, whipped cream.
trying to make sure it all comes out. Try to turn it up just a little. It's hard to, you know, see the whipped cream if the lighting is way too high. So just letting it all pour out. And then this, I'm going to mix it up until it's all mixed together. Takes a while. Of course, you can save time by um, using a spoon. Okay. So now we're just going to mix this up, mix it all up together. So this is just the whipped cream and the mixture that you mixed earlier. You're bringing that mixture out, and it's kind of hard to see, like I said, but I'm going to mix this up, and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm back, and the whip, the whipped cream and the mixture is all mixed up, and you should be good actually mixing the mixture in in the you know the bowl the whipped cream came in you should be good just stir very carefully you know so that you don't get like an over spillage and you end up losing some because this is what is um gonna go on the top of your cake you guys and we are when i say in the running ends of getting this cake done we are at the end so just kind of put it on there and i'm you know you do it of course with two hands It'll be super easy, but of course, like I said, I'm doing this with one hand. So, just bear with me trying to keep the phone out of the shade. And I'm just going to pour a little bit and I'm just going to spread it with my spoon. So, just kind of, you know, spreading it all over. And, you know, because your cake is cool, the, um, the whipped cream should not do any type of melting whatsoever like everything should be good and set in its place because the cake is no longer hot so the whole cooking process of this cake is over and right now I'm just um spreading it as you see just spreading it over say it's just like frosting but it's it's a lot lighter. It's 10 times lighter than frosting. And um, it's funny because, let me back up some. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more light. And I'm telling you, when I get my ring light, I would be so happy because then you guys will see exactly what I'm seeing. Right now, the lighting is off. But um, for the most part in making this cake, I myself, I am not a whipped cream person. Like, you know, I've ran into people who love, like, eat whipped cream straight out the can. And I'm telling you, I hate whipped cream. And it's strange because when I got introduced to this cake, I was like, I don't know. I guess you could say I was borderline shocked because with any time, like, if, you know, per se, if I have, like, a little party and it's, like, something last minute get together, you know how... Piggly Wiggly or places like that, you know, they have their separate little um, cakes, you know, the pre-made cakes. So, I'll go grab one of those. And if it says whipped topping, I don't care if it's the last thing on the shelf, I will not buy it. Like, I hate whipped topping frosting. So, when I got introduced to this cake, you know, I was kind of like whipped. I don't think I said that's going to be you know, what, a norm, what you would normally say when you don't want something or when you think it's going to be bad. I'm like, ew, this is going to be disgusting. But like I said, my sister put me up on this recipe and I do not regret it because it is really good. And I guess, you know, with me, I don't know if you can really tell. I'm kind of bringing it back some just so you guys can see. I'm just thinning it out because, like I said, I am not crazy about whipped cream at all. Not so much the taste, but just the texture itself. I am not crazy about whipped cream, and I mean at all. I hate, I've never been the type to just eat whipped cream from a can. Actually, if it wasn't for this cake, I would have never bought whipped cream. Like, never. So, you know, right now I'm just trying to smooth it out, you know. 
guess for a regular person it wouldn't take all this but you know i just feel like i want it you know kind of even i don't want to bite into it and then just feel like i'm soaking my teeth in the mashed potatoes or something so right now i'm just trying to um you know even out the even out the whipped cream i'm sorry if sometimes i'm off the cake on the cake but like i said if you've been watching you know that everything i'm doing is literally with one hand like one hand everything is with one hand so i think this is pretty good i'm not gonna smother mine you know the amount of whipped cream is completely up to you if you are a whipped cream fan then you can just put the whole thing of whipped cream on there i myself i am not a whipped cream fan i'm surprised my kids enjoyed it because you know that's just kind of how it goes in the household you know when you don't eat something you don't buy it and nobody else eats it because it never comes in the door so this is just this finished you know evenly spread it just like frosting but it's um a lot lighter a lot softer a lot easier to spread without ripping the cake so that's done and now for your top of course this is where it gets exciting we are gonna put it's upside down because I cut the bag open but the Heath chocolate toffee bar bits that I showed you I guess and I don't know let me just I'm just pre-squeezing a bag you guys I don't want no big chunks on the cake I'm so picky whatever okay so as you see I'm just my god like this cake is slowly slowly coming to life and I cannot wait to eat this but like I said after this I'm trying to bag up to keep from getting the shadow of my phone on the cake you know cuz then it kind of makes it dark so right now I'm just sprinkling sprinkling the uh, toffee bits cuz these I noticed with these these were this and the caramel at the bottom of the cake was like my favorite part you know cuz the first time my sister was nice enough to make me one cuz I had been bugging her like, please make me one of those cakes, you know, because she's really good at get-togethers, you know. She's the one that'll come out with the desserts nobody's ever had before, so. That's who put me up on this cake. And like I said, this was the most favorite part for me. Now, if you are a type where you are more, you know, teeth sensitive, you know, like me, but if it's something good enough, you guys, I will eat this cake like I'm chewing hot food. And it sounds bad, but guess what? That's how good this cake is. I'm in love with this cake. So everything is there. You know, you don't have to put, like I said, everything is completely up to you. You can put less toffee bits. You can actually, because even after I was done, I still have less than half of a bag left. So if you like candy and you like the, you know, a heath, or if you like the taste of just the top, or if you think you might like a candy bar, I can't really explain because I've never, like I said, everything this cake was made from, I'm not even going to lie, you guys. I, I was not a fan of. I have never bought a Heath bar. I have never bought whipped cream. And lo and behold, these are two things I never buy. I never buy German chocolate cake mix. Never. These are just things that the cake was made with that I just so happy and fell in love with. So you don't have to put so many. But of course, I did. And... This is what we have left puddled at the bottom, I think, which that's a pretty good amount of caramel at the bottom that we have left. And then I'm just going to, let's see, we're going to tip it up one time and uh, I'm going to try to open it with this other hand without making a big mess. Try to get it before it goes all the way down or go back down. Okay, let's see. Yeah. All right, here we go. So then... We just doing it, and you drizzle however you want. Why I started sideways, I have no idea. But you can drizzle your caramel however you like. If you figure, you know, oh, I don't think I like that on the top, don't put it on the top. Because when I tell you, when you cut into this cake, trust me, there will be enough caramel at the bottom for you to just enjoy the taste all together. So... Like I said, and then if you are one that likes this, you know, if you are like, if you like caramel, then that's why I had said, um, 
you know, this jar is completely done. I want to get in a better lighting just to give you guys a better. Well, I should have started making it over here, huh? Okay, well, as you see the little stripes of caramel, caramel, I switch it when I call it. And then this is what I was talking about when you, you know, if you run out of this and you figure you want more on the top, then you could easily open this. Let me just see. I'm just trying to decipher, like, the taste. Let's see. Just the taste between the two, just to see, you know, if it's... Okay, guys. So, one, this one is a lot, lot sweeter. And I know everybody's saying, well, duh, it goes on ice cream. True, it goes on ice cream, but you can use this for other things. But this... Mm, I would say, I don't know, you guys. I would, I, I don't think I would use that for extra. You know, I don't know. Because I'm not the really, you know, I'm not heavy on sweet, sweet stuff. Because like I said, my teeth are not the best at handling sweet stuff. But this one is definitely a lot sweeter. Then the actual Smucker's not bad, but you know what? Actually, you know, it's like the more I'm tasting it. Let's see. Look at this, y'all. So I'm literally just putting like, I put a trail. So the Smucker's is the darker version, right? And the Hershey syrup is the lighter syrup. So I'm like really going in with this, y'all. Okay, so if you can see, you got the darker syrup. Try to focus. Focus. Okay, so you see darker syrup and lighter syrup. And I literally just drizzled it all over. And we just going to work with that because it's sweet. But I, I think it'll give the cake a really good kind of sweet taste because the Smucker's Caramel is just however you want to see it caramel caramel that's what it is it ain't it ain't, it's not real sweet but this right here adds quite a bit of sweetness which is why i only did a, a few lines but this is the finished product and it's it's pretty heavy so this is the cake that i made called the better than almost anything and i believe it i believe it and i'm gonna stick to it because the first time I tried this cake, it was it was really good. And I kind of want to cut a piece out to show you guys what the bottom is. But if you make this cake, you'll see that the bottom, when you cut into it, anywhere in the whole entire cake, when you cut into it, you'll notice that the bottom has all the underlying caramel that we poured, the caramel mixture. It's all sitting at the bottom of your pan, which makes this cake, you just get sweetness from the top to the bottom. So this is the finished product. And because, you know, whipped, whipped cream can get kind of um, soft or it can get really soft if it's like in room temperature. Then what you're going to do is take the cake and put it in the refrigerator. And just let it sit. I want to let me turn this light down some. Okay. Let it sit so that your um, whipped cream can kind of stiff up a little. And I would say maybe after about, I'm going to cook something else after this, which would be probably the next video posted, which is how to make homemade chili. But while I'm cooking, I think it might take me about an hour or so. Not really sure, but just let it cool to where, you know, the whip cream can take place i say about 30 minutes just leave it in the fridge and um when you bring it out it should be ready to eat and um while this cake took like you know multiple steps it was definitely worth it because it's a family favorite and it's something that i would make over and over again i will like i said i wasn't well goddamn I wasn't a big fan of whipped cream. And this, um, I just usually put the extras up. 
But I wasn't a big fan of whipped cream and anything else, let alone German chocolate cake. Never picked this stuff up without this cake ever being introduced to me. I would never pick up these things on the regular because I am the type where I call it me sticking. I say, I usually say go with what you know. Because anytime I y'all step outside the box and do something different, it never works. So I learned from that and just stop but whipped cream I got mm, quite a bit but of course this this is reusable if you got that kind of household where anything that come in the door you can reuse <laughs> like my household this is it just I'm dumping it out I'm washing it and that is it but that concludes my video for my better than almost anything cake and thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to try to get this channel up where it needs to be. Because like I said, I don't have subscribers, but I am cooking because this cooking is helping my dad and, you know, my brother. Anybody, any kind of single man, you know, in my family that doesn't have a woman to cook, this channel is really helping them because they're kind of watching and cooking with me as I cook too, so... Until this channel get where it needs to be, like I said, I'm going to keep on cooking. Um, finally, got the first dessert. Finally, finally, I'm glad. My favorite dessert also. So the first one, finally done with that. And like I said, just work with me. This channel going to get better because most of the time at the end of my videos, I'm just showing my tabletop and me cleaning up and picking up. And, you know, when I get a camera, I'll be able to pivot and turn and things like that and put myself in the videos but for right now i just want to cook and show you you guys firsthand you know everything that you should do so thank you guys for watching chef with cashmere um i'm still working on my other channel cashmere charm slide over there and subscribe just so that you know you can be in the know when i post something it's coming really close I'm still going to school and trying to keep up with that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean my kitchen and I'm looking forward to the cake for dessert. But thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next video. Hit that uh, notification button so you'll be updated when, um, when I get ready to post my next video. All right, you guys. Thank you. Bye.